Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome back uh, we have as of now derived equations for conservation and uh, we already reviewed there is no more of review we are already entering gas dynamics from now it is uh, I believe the fourth class so we are on time. Okay. So, we are going to start with uh, one dimensional flow okay. in reality no flow is really one dimensional. So, you have to now think about what is one dimensional flow and then once we understand what we are talking about as one dimensional flow we will go into deriving again equations for one dimensional flow. Okay. What we are going to do is we will start with the original equations we derived all this time simplify that to go to one dimensional after that we will mostly use only one dimensional equations nothing else. So, what do we mean by one dimensional flow and uh, why is it a useful thing to go for uh, any ideas let us answer the first one what do you mean by one dimensional flow first flow, flow parameters are a function of only one direction so now flow velocity has a unique direction flow velocity has a one only one direction flow properties are function of only one direction ok those are all like very constraining terms ok. Uh, let us look at the other thing when will I use a one dimensional flow approximation then we will get back to this when will I use a flow when will I call a flow one dimensional. flow through a duct as in you are thinking a straight pipe or can the duct be curved like this it can be curved also and we can still use one dimensional flow areas should not change you are saying ok uh, I do not want to accept that fully also ok, but ok now we will go back to my way of looking at it. So, I am going to say there is some general flow through a duct we will start with flow through a duct simple enough some crazy shaped duct I do not know what shape it is really let us say it is something which is having area changing and there is flow inside this ok. Let us make it slightly nicer than this something like this. Now, I am going to say my flow is entering this way and is coming out through this. In reality what it is doing is it is going to have a boundary layer which means the velocity profile is not this top hat profile or uniform profile as we have drawn it it is going to be more like this towards the end the velocity will go to 0 on both sides this will be more like the actual velocity profile there and the same thing will happen here let us say I will draw it one section before it is going to be some kind of velocity profile do not worry about the integral not being same it should be the same but I have not drawn it correctly that we will not worry about right now. Anyways, so if this is the flow and I am not really worried about the change in this direction the perpendicular to the main axis of the duct direction locally I am saying locally very important word there I am going to say at this point this is my flow direction at this point this is my flow direction I am not worried as long as I am going to say when the flow is here this way flow everywhere here is only this way 
that is I am not having any huge recirculation flows inside. If I pick a case more like this, if this is my duct, then most likely the flow will just go straight with a huge recirculation sitting here. How do I know this? You should know some fluid mechanics. Okay. This is not fluid mechanics course, I will not go into that. But if this is the case, now if I take this point, flow is not always going in one direction. Okay. And if I take this point, this velocity is significantly high or it is at least of the order of this velocity here. Okay. So, those are things which I cannot neglect. This flow is not really one dimensional. When I look at this flow, it is not really very bad. If I look at, at any cross section, flow is roughly going perpendicular to that area of cross section, nothing else. And if I am willing to neglect the changes near the wall tips, near the ends, I am going to say it is not really changing, it is changing in say 5 percent of my area or something like that, I will neglect it or I am not interested in that, that change then I can replace this velocity profile by a flat velocity profile with equivalent mass flow. Okay. This I am removing the center velocity a little bit, adding it to the corner so that my masses are same. The mass that is actually flowing here is imagined by me to be flowing in this corner so that the velocity profile is uniform. That is the way I am going to look at it. This change I have drawn it exaggerated it will not be the really this big, it will typically be very small if it is just a flow through a close to one dimensional duct. Okay. I did not tell what the cross section shape is going to look like. If I take this cross section and look at the shape in front of me, it may be looking however crazy it feels like. This may be the duct cross section, I do not care. Okay. As long as the flow is going only perpendicular to this duct, this area nothing else, no other flow, that is my assumption currently. Typically, if there is such a flow, nobody will want to use 1D assumption, I will also tell you that. Typically, they will use it only for something less crazy, more like this. They can use 1D assumption for this, this is a lot more complex, there will be other effects which I am neglecting here, that is for fluid mechanics people to teach you. But if a flow is going to have such things, here the velocity will be pretty high and I cannot neglect this velocity with respect to this one. So, in this particular situation, I cannot use 1D at least in this area, but if I do not care, if I just say I am interested in this section and interested in this section, I can probably use it. Okay. Depending on what my interests are, I have to think about using this. Okay. This is just simple example of 1D. Now, I also told I can think about it as stream tube, somebody said, I do not know, but I like stream tube way of looking at things. Why? What is a stream tube? What is a stream tube? If I form a, form a duct with a whole bunch of stream lines together, how will I think of it easily? Let us say, the flow is currently through the board and I am going to draw a closed loop on this board. Now, there is a whole bunch of streamlines going from every point into the board. If I go on the other side of the board and see all those lines coming, those streamlines together will form a tube and there is no mass that is going to cross this line, right. That is the way I have to think about it. Oh, I will think about it in a better way, flow is coming from inside the board towards this side, easier to think about. So, I am going to say there is a whole bunch of streamlines coming out from here, coming out from here, wherever, whichever direction they are going to take, but overall I will keep all of them connected the same way, they cannot cross, right. So, this circle may change shape to something else, yes, it may become something else like this, somewhere else, when it comes to this section it may have a different shape, but the streamlines would have never crossed each other, that is a basic rule in fluid mechanics, it cannot, right. So, I do not need to worry about what happens, the tube remains as a tube, flow inside will remain inside, the mass that entered inside this circle 
will stay inside this whatever new shape we are having at some other distance, but it will not go out. No other extra mass from outside has also come inside this, no exchange across this. That is why it can be imagined as a tube, it can be imagined as a physical tube sitting there. The advantage of using this is I do not need to worry about walls and having boundary layers and other effects that does not exist here. Okay. So, I can imagine a flow fully through this whole room, no boundaries, no walls nearby, still I can imagine a circle here and say all the streamlines going through this, all of them will form a tube, that tube can also be used, okay. that can also be a stream tube. Okay. Now, I will imagine this as my stream tube now, I will go back and use this as a stream tube and uh, if I can say that in my wherever I am interested in that particular cross section, there is significantly only velocity perpendicular to this area and not along this plane of the area any other direction. If that is not there or I am willing to neglect that particular flow, okay. neglect should be like reasonable neglection, it cannot be like it is 100 meter per second, the main flow is 5 meter per second and I am neglecting 100 meter per second, that should not be the case, that is not really neglecting, it is ignoring, we do not want to ignore, we just want to be able to neglect. If there is such a flow which we can neglect, okay, then neglect the perpendicular components, the along the area plane uh, component, if I can neglect, then I will consider that kind of flow and that is to be valid everywhere in this whole duct or your stream tube. If it is valid everywhere in your stream tube, then I can consider that kind of flows to be one dimensional flow. Okay. Now, the next thing is there any practical flow that will have such a thing? 1D flow, jet exhaust. Uh, think about it, this no flow will be really that. Okay. The reason is. I will take that particular example jet exhaust, I am going to say there is some nozzle, this is the exit plane of the nozzle and there is jet coming out, it will not be just going straight, what will it do? It will start mixing with the outside and this region is going to have shear layers, eddies forming, all kinds of vortex rings formed, whatever depending on the Reynolds number. So, the flow is going to be doing all kinds of things like this you would have seen pretty pictures like this on the web or in fluid mechanics books. Okay. We do not want to go into details of it. If I think about a particular streamline, this is not really a streamline I have drawn, I have not drawn a streamline really, okay. it is probably not even a clean streak line, it is something else. Okay. Uh, if I draw streamlines, it will be looking sometimes going this way, sometimes going this way and all that. Okay. So, this flow is really unsteady, but can I neglect is the question I am going to ask again. There is some deviation of my, I will consider this as a stream tube, no? the straight thing, if the flow is just going straight like water from a tap, water from a tap forms that nice stream tube by the way, okay. flow inside that is all inside that stream tube formed by edge between water and air, nice example. So, I am thinking about that kind of stream tube, but the edges are shaking, oscillating. You would have seen this again in water if you increase the flow rate a little more. Okay. If I am willing to neglect those changes, I will say in real life it is not exactly uh, forming that straight thing, it is oscillating in time. Okay. But it does not affect my understanding or it does not affect my particular study, it does not affect what I am interested in, then I can still say I will just draw something along this line, this is what typically all the shear layer people will do, they will just draw some average line that way and this way and say my jet grows at this rate and then they will just talk about growth rate of a jet and just worry about such things and we can imagine that kind of thing as an average line. Now, we will just think about time averaged quantities, I am not interested in instantaneous values, if it is instantaneous 
maybe my stream tube would have been curved crazy something like this we are willing to neglect that okay that becomes your close to 1d not really 1d but we'll assume it to be 1d so we'll call that the quasi 1d problem okay actually it is quasi static 1d problem quasi stationary 1d problem whatever okay now there are other simpler examples which are more common to gas dynamics okay flow through a nozzle i have a flow that's going like this coming back out like this of course there is a there is a wall that's going like this and inside that there is flow now i am going to assume that the flow tracks the wall by the way if there is separation the flow doesn't track the wall then there will be recirculation zones that flow cannot be really considered as 1d why it will have the same problem as this recirculation zone it will have the same problem this velocity will be comparable to this i cannot neglect this okay. we will go back here uh, let us say we will not have separation we will have nice flow and the central line streamline will just go straight if i have a flow like this at any cross section at this cross section it's really nice all the streamlines are perpendicular to the area nice my valid uh, my assumption is perfectly valid no problems here again it is again valid everywhere flows perpendicular to that cross section area at the center also it is valid is it really valid here not really valid here okay the flow is having some other component that way and other component this way when it is having these components am i willing to neglect that is the question i am going to ask i am going to say the actual velocity this way is very small compared to the velocity component this way okay i am going to split this actual velocity vectors will be more like this i am saying this velocity is very high compared to this velocity i am going to neglect this component and i will assume that my flow is going straight parallel to this will any real flow do this no it will always follow the wall but we are assuming that it is going straight and still follow the wall somehow we won't talk about it still following the wall we won't draw this kind of streamlines in 1d flow why it's 1d there is no streamline concept in 1d 1d all streamlines are parallel always okay only when there is 2d i can think about a slope really 1d there is no slope right hopefully you are comfortable with that dy by dx gives you a slope y and x should be there there is only x there is no slope really i can just talk about velocity gradient along this that doesn't give you a slope and so you don't get a streamline streamline needs slope of velocity vector to draw this or slope of the streamline gives you the velocity vector direction hopefully you know this so we cannot define a streamline in 1d flow and we are going to assume such things here 1d here we are going to say this is clean very easy to assume here at this cross junction throat when i go to this diverging and converging area cross sections there things may not be very nice but we'll assume it is close to 1d again we are going to call this the quasi 1d quasi 1d flow okay the previous one was we are assuming that it, it's not very steady but we'll assume it to be close to steady that's i'll call it quasi stationary okay now we'll go to the next thing and i'm going to say it is quasi 1d flow we are approximately saying it is 1d flow it's not really 1d i'm neglecting the perpendicular to streamline direction components okay now when the velocities are very high there is one more thing we need to worry about in real flow what is that in real flow velocities are very high something else turbulence we are going to neglect that also in here okay we won't worry about turbulence we'll just say turbulence may have its effect but that is not as high as this main component of velocities there will be some fluctuation of my velocity up and down in time we will say that fluctuation magnitude is very small compared to my main velocity magnitude along my 1d direction so we'll consider only that and we'll ignore those small things 
so it looks as if it is steady okay it's actually quasi 1d problem so it look like it's very nice and steady but uh, we won't pick up any unsteady problem as such right now we'll do go to unsteady problem towards the end of this course last two lectures or something we'll do unsteady okay where i am talking about suddenly i opened the valve through a nozzle what happens we'll we can even look at some pictures from one of my students research i think we can look at that when the time comes up those are all possibilities but uh, we will start deriving equations for steady one dimensional flow for now we'll stick to steady problems okay of course we have already neglected the fluctuations in velocity perpendicular to those main line what if the main line itself is varying at time we are going to neglect that right now okay so we are going to simplify the expressions and then start deriving mass equation momentum equation energy equation okay now i want to go revisit control volume what is a control volume we already did this before deriving all the equations it's some imaginary volume some surface we are going to use okay inside the flow field which is going to mark the region of interest for us and we are going to study what is happening inside that volume that's what is supposed to be and i also they already told that uh, it is an art in picking what control volume we want for a given problem it's an art and uh, if you pick the correct control volume our equations may get simplified if not it may become very complex we'll see that in momentum equation today so we'll do two kinds of control volume in all the problems okay two types of control volumes one will be let's say my flow is like this some such flow i can put a control volume something like this it's roughly a stream tube forming my control volume that's a possibility or i could take some perpendicular plane to all the stream line and a very close to it another perpendicular plane and i'll connect them here this could be my control volume also very thin slice of control volume i can choose either the big control volume or the thin control volume they will give different kinds of equations for conservation okay if i do this big thing i am going to talk about what is happening inside this whole volume when i talk about this very thin slice i am going to talk about what is the change that is happening at this point okay one is going to talk about integral form other will talk about differential form that's what it is if you already know something about it. if not we'll go and look at it now okay there are two forms that are possible so we want to start with uh, mass equation we want to derive mass momentum energy equation today itself we'll finish all that off today okay so i want to go look at a, a little more detail i'll pick the big control volume right now i will keep the other one but i want to use it right now okay let us uh, mark my control volume edges the big control volume my control volume is a b c d in this case it's a volume i'm going to assume it's going 1 meter inside whatever even at distance inside okay so the normal is this way here here the normal is here in here the normal could be some other place so something like this now when i think about uh, fluxes we always have this term right u dot n ds this is related to flux okay 
So, when I think about flux here, this is actually mass flux related. So, we will, so it is not really a mass flux, it is actually volume flux right now, we would not worry about that, ok. We will get back to this, actual mass equation has this, momentum equation has this, energy equation has this, every equation has this. So, we are going to start here, we want to see what this quantity looks like first before we go to equations. At this point, flow velocity is this way, n vector is this way. What will that give me? It is 1 d flow. So, actually flow will be aligned along this normal, right. By definition of 1 d flow, we said perpendicular to the cross section flow goes. So, perpendicular to the cross section is where the normal direction will be. So, you are going to get to that point. What will this value be? U dot n value. It will be minus u magnitude, ok. Minus of u magnitude will be what it will come out to be. On that side, it will be positive of u magnitude at this point. It may be different from here to here, it may be different velocities. What about the top? Let us pick this point, what will it be here? It should be 0, why? I chose my control volume such that my control volume edge goes along a stream tube. I picked my control volume such that the streamline is parallel to the edge, which means this normal to the edge will be perpendicular to my streamline, which means my u dot n will be cos 90 0 right? that will come out to be 0. So, this u dot n will be 0 on this particular control volume. I was smart enough to choose such a control volume. That will be the same answer here, same answer here, same answer here. Always I chose along streamlines. That is a good thing about choosing stream tubes as control volumes, ok. So, we will keep such control volume. Now, we will look at the mass equation. I will start with already derived equation. We had this particular form. We had so many forms, I am going to use one of them. We had such a form, ok. Before we made it into volume integral, we had this form, this is the integral equation. And then we said it is a steady flow. We are going to neglect this, there is no gradient in time. We said we are going to look at only steady flow. And then now we are going to look at this. I have to integrate this over all the surfaces and it is a 1D problem. My all the other surfaces, all the side surfaces are all going to give me u dot n as 0, including this side surface and the back of the board surface, they are all going to be 0 only this perpendicular cross section thing will remain, only those terms will remain, ok. Now, I will label these sections as 1 and 2. Now, I can write this integral value exactly, because it is going to be one value for each section, u dot n will be one value for each section, ok. So, I can write that value to be minus rho 1 u 1 a 1. How did I get this a 1? As the cross section area at section 1. How did I get that? This is a constant value at that section. Density is constant at that section. Why is it constant? 1 d flow, ok. This whole region there is no variation here, that is my 1 d flow assumption anyway. So, I am taking it out, the out of the integral sorry, taking it out of the integral, only thing is integral s d s that is my total area of my cross section, that will be my a 1. Why did I get this minus? u is this way, n is this way, cos of 180 will be minus 1, ok. I get to this form or equivalently I can say take one of them to the other side and say rho u a is constant. From section to section, I can say rho u a will be constant. From one section, section 1 to section 2, I am going, 
rho u a cannot change. What is this rho u a? What will it come out to be? Mass flow rate. How did you get that? Area times length per time. Area times length per time is volume per time into mass by volume will be mass per time. Okay. You can actually prove that it is exactly mass flow rate. This is just dimensionally I am showing it to be mass flow rate. Whatever I told can be thought of as from here to here if I go with same cross section it will sweep that much volume with that density that will give me how much mass went past that area. I will keep that as an exercise you guys solve it by yourself it can be shown to be mass flow rate exactly. So, I will write this as m dot equal to rho u a equal to constant. very important relation for gas dynamics. Okay. We will keep this, this is your mass equation if I think about using a big control volume along stream tubes, this is one expression. Now, we will go and use this small control volume, I will draw this control volume again. I am going to say the control volume changes the area differentially a small thin slice may have a new area after that a plus d a ok. d a can be positive or negative if it is negative it will be shrinking currently I have drawn it as if it is expanding does not matter. Now, I am going to say it has some particular density, density would change by d rho any of these d quantities could be positive or negative. We do not need all of them, I can still write temperature goes to temperature plus d t, we do not need all that actually we need only a rho and u currently. Okay. Now, all I have to go is start with this point, I know this is true on d flow, I will start from here and apply this to this particular control volume, that is an easy way of going. On section 1 for me to section 2, the other side of my control volume what am I going to get rho u a equal to rho plus d rho multiplied by u plus d u multiplied by a plus d a. I okay. will get to this form, now if I multiply it out I will get a rho u a here that will cancel with this rho u a, I will also get a lot of uh, differential terms multiplying each other d rho d u d a is one term d rho d u a is another term like that there are so many terms which have multiple differential terms multiplying each other. Now, we will neglect those by saying d u d rho is very small compared to rho u, so I will neglect that term. I have to always say when it is very small it is compared to something else, okay. so uh, think about that. Okay. Now, I will keep only terms that have one differential term that it will be a times u times d rho that is one term possible, like that I can have rho times u times d a, like that I can have another term rho times a times d u, by the way there are only 3 such terms, I just named all the 3. So, we will write those 3 terms, and I am going to say it is equal to 0, really I have neglected some terms, it is roughly equal to 0. If I pick my control volume to be very very thin slice, then I am more justified, okay. we will keep it that way, it is nothing wrong. When I make this slice very very small, this d rho will be derivative times this thin slice, t rho by d x times delta x, that will become your thin slice, very thin slice, that is the limit of calculus mathematicians are okay with it, so I do not think there is any problem, we can say it is close to 0, we will keep it as 0 for now. Okay. So, this can be simplified if I divide this whole expression by rho u a, but always keep in mind that when I divide